and this is part three, naming molecular compounds and acids. So let's look at molecular compounds. So that's our next category. And um, so remember that these are going to be all nonmetals, and we're going to have a completely different naming scheme for these. Um, and we're going to have all nonmetals. The first one will keep its name. The second one will change to "-ied", and then the subscripts will indicate with a Greek prefix. So here's a list of the Greek prefixes that we're going to use. So 2 is di, 3 is tri, 4 is tetra, and so forth, okay? Um, so for example, this one right here, SF6, where the first one keeps its name, sulfur, there's got a subscript of 6, so we use the prefix hexa, and then the fluoride, the last one changes to ide. So that's how we name it. Name the first one, use the prefixes for how many. Let's look at this next one, N2O4. So the first one keeps its name, nitrogen. Um, it has a, a subscript, so we're going to call it dinitrogen. And then the last one, change it to ide, and it's got four, so it's tetraoxide. Okay, now you may think, well, wait, tetraoxide, where's the A? When a prefix ends in an O or an A, um, and it starts with a vowel, like this example, tetraoxide is a little awkward, so we just drop the A and call it tetraoxide. So that's kind of just a grammar thing um, that you can use. And in molecular compounds, we're not going to reduce the subscripts. If we were talking about an ionic compound, we wouldn't leave a 2,4, but this goes back to the idea of the formula unit versus the molecule. The molecule may not be a simplest ratio. In this case, it is not. So leave the subscripts how they are. Don't try to simplify them. That's just for ionic. All right, let's do some more examples here. So SO2, the first one keeps its name, sulfur. The second one changes to ide, and we have a 2, so we'll call it dioxide. Okay. Next one, the first one, nitrogen, but there's four of them, so it's tetra nitrogen. I'm going to run out of space here. And then SE is selenium, it's going to change to selenide. So in the four, so it's tetra selenide. Um, the last one, first element is iodine. So we call it di-iodine. And then five is penta. And we'll drop the A. That's an X pentoxide. Okay, so really easy to name these. Um, the trick is not applying this to the, um, don't apply it to ionic, it's so easy, you'll want to use it everywhere, but this only applies for molecular. The last category is acids. So acids are, are compounds that start with H. Um, acids have an H with a positive charge, so the hydrogen is acting like a cation in um, in acid, so it will be an H plus with some other anion. Usually you'll see this AQ, meaning aqueous, for acids, because if it's not in water, AQ means dissolved in water, if it's not dissolved in water, it may not be acting like an acid giving off an H plus. Don't let the AQ um, confuse you, because compounds that have AQ after a Ionic compounds can, molecular compounds, that just means dissolved in water, okay? So the first thing we're going to do when we're naming an acid is identify the anion, because we have two types of anions. We have oxygens without, uh, um, acids without oxygen and acids um, with a polyatomic ion. These are ones with oxygen, okay? So if there's no oxygen, we use the prefix hydro, 
And then this word is, is from the halogen. Usually it's a halogen. So um, for example, HF becomes hydro, there's the hydro, fluoric acid. You can add the word acid, okay? If it were HCl, it would be hydrochloric acid. All right, the, there's a polyatomic ion that falls in this category that the CN minus has no oxygen in it. And so we use the same rule and we call that hydrocyanic acid. So that's what you do with no, no oxygen. Generally, it's gonna be a halogen or possibly that cyanide ion. If it does have oxygen, we're talking about a polyatomic ion. If that ion ends in eight, change the ending to ick. If that ion ends in it, change the ending to s, okay? So for example, H2SO3, okay? You look at the SO3 part. You look up that polyatomic ion, okay? It is sulfite, it. It ends in it, so we're gonna change it to s. So that's how it becomes sulfurous acid, O-U-S, all right? The next one, look at this polyatomic ion, all right? NO2, that was nitrite. Again, it's it, so it becomes us, nitrous acid. Looking at this one, SO4. SO4 is sulfate. Eight is going to change to ick. So that's sulfuric acid. The eight goes to ick. This one, NO3, NO3 is nitrate, ends in eight, it becomes an ick, nitric acid. Then the last one, PO4, that's phosphate, so it becomes phosphoric acid, all right? Also notice, and I made too big a mess of this, you can't really tell, but you've got to balance the charge. Hydrogen's plus one. So like, for example, here, H2SO3. SO3 was minus two. So you've got to have two hydrogens to go with that. All right, um, PO4 is minus three. So that's why you have three hydrogens to go with that. So you're balancing the charge. Let's try some more examples. Um, Here's one, give the formula for phosphoric acid, okay? If we have the name, we look at the ick, that tells you it came from the eight. So you look at your list of polyatomic ions, phosphate is PO4 with the three minus. So phosphoric acid has to be H3PO4 aqueous. All right, so that's how you would go from a name to a formula. Here's some more to try. HCl. All right, this time we don't have a, an oxygen on it, so this time we're going to need the hydro. So we start with hydro, and since it's chlorine, it's going to be chloric acid. All right, next one, HI. Again, no oxygen, so we're gonna start with hydro. And then iodine is gonna be iodic acid, hydroiodic acid. HCN we've already done over here. Let's go ahead and skip that. Um, H, HNO2 we've also done, let's look at H to CO3. Okay, it's got oxygen, so we look at this piece, CO3, that's carbonate, so 8 is going to change to ick, and we're going to change the emphasis too, it's going to be carbonic acid. Okay, no hydro because it has oxygen, the hydros if it doesn't have oxygen. And the last one we've also already done. So that's naming acids. All 
Um, another way to think about naming is with the flow chart. So this is also um, a handout in the module, and if you like this better, it's helpful as well. So this just asks yes, no questions. So you start with, does the formula start with H? So if yes, then you go here, it's an acid. If no, the next question is, does it start with a metal or the ammonium ion? If no, it's molecular, and you use those prefixes. If yes, it's ionic. And then you have to ask yourself, um, does the metal need a Roman numeral? Does it have a polyatomic ion? And so forth. And so uh, it kind of just goes through the yes, no questions. And that's another chart that may be helpful in naming. So we're now to the essential skills. Now, I recommend you look at the PowerPoint that doesn't have the video recorded because it has a lot of practice problems and it has some interesting applications, some names of compounds that, and where you find them in nature. So I recommend you look at that one as well. But basically, here's the final things you need to know from this chapter. Be able to classify elements as atomic or molecular and compounds as ionic or molecular. Find the total number of each atom in a chemical formula Write formulas for and name ionic compounds. Write formulas for and name binary molecular compounds. We only looked at compounds that had two elements, so they're much more complicated ones, but we won't name those. And then write the names for, write formulas for and names for acids. And those are the skills.